Well hello internet and welcome to part two of my QT video tutorial. Today I'm going to create exactly what you guys asked for in the last tutorial which is a complete GUI calculator all in one video. I'm also going to talk about interfaces, style sheets, slots and signals which were basically QT events uh, or event handling. I'm going to talk about widgets, how to search for widgets by name. I'm going to talk about casting, regular expressions and the grid interface. Like always all the code is available in the description underneath the video and I have a lot to do so let's get into it. Okay, and here is QT, and I'm going to come in here and click on New Project, and I'm going to have it be a QT Widgets application. If you can't see this, view it full screen. And I'm going to go like this, and the name is going to be Calculator, and let's go and create that, and everything here is fine. I'm just going to create a desktop application, and I'm going to change this to Calculator, and leave everything else exactly the same, and click on Continue. I'm not going to set up version control, and I'm going to click on done and here is everything all created here and I went and enlarged the fonts and I'm gonna come in here this is basically a standalone video you don't need to watch part one to understand this I'm gonna come over here to forms and calculator and show you how to set up everything very first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna have this be a grid layout but I prefer to uh, first add an item and then go from there. All right, so what am I gonna add here? Well, I need a basic display for my calculator. If you wanna see what the finished calculator looks like, all you need to do is go to the very end of the video and you'll see it. So what am I gonna need to use right here? Basically, I'd like to use a line edit. I think that's gonna work out good. I'm just gonna drop that inside of here. Then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go layout and I'm gonna say layout in a grid. And there we go. And then I'm gonna select our line edit again. And then I'm gonna come over here to have it basically uh, look good on the screen. I'm gonna come over here to horizontal and it's set for expanding. I'm gonna instead change that to preferred and you can see that nothing really happened. And then I'm gonna come over here to vertical and I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna change that to expanding. All right, so we got that all set up. Now what I wanna do, well, why don't I come in here and change the name on this? Um, I'm also not gonna need a toolbar, so I can just click on that and remove toolbar. So there it's gone. And I come in here to this guy and I'm just gonna call it display because I think that's a good name. So have it all selected. And now what I want to do is go and put in a whole bunch of buttons. So where are we going to find our, there they are, our push buttons. And if you want to have those go in your interface, all you do is drag them over here. And you can see that it's going to appear underneath here. So just drop that inside. And I'm going to go and add a whole bunch more. And you can see there's a blue line that shows you exactly where everything's going to be set up. And I think it's going to work best if I have this set up so that I can have it be um, five across. So push button and push button and another push button. And so we have five of those all set up. Then I'm gonna select, uh, well, let's just go and get all the push buttons on the screen. So basically, I'm just gonna drag all these in here underneath. So there's another set of push buttons and more. And I'm basically going to set it up so that I have five wide and then finally they are going to be four deep. And for the line edit up here, I can just drag it into position so that it fills out all of the screen because otherwise it would look really stupid. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna hold down my command key as I go and click on everything to select all of these different guys. So there we go. All the push buttons are being selected and I'm gonna do style sheets on them and everything else you can possibly imagine. I'm going to first though, however, horizontally, I'm gonna set these for preferred and I'm gonna set vertical policy also to preferred and you can see how those all set up. I'm going to, let's go, well, while I have this selected, I'm gonna go in and style all these buttons as well. So what we can do is come down here where we see style sheets over here on the corner and just click on this little guy right here and I'm gonna show you how to properly style all these. So I guess I have to zoom in a little bit. Now to style them, I just go Q, push, button and you're gonna notice that this is very close to like a CSS, the way you would do everything. And I'll tab in here and I'm gonna say that I wanna change my background color and in regards to what color that should be, I'm gonna to go to wikipedia.org forward slash wiki and web colors. If you just type in wiki web colors, that'll show up. And I like this, I'm just going to use a silver C-O-C-O-C-O, -O -O, that guy right there. 
All right, so I'm back inside of here, and I'm, I might change some of the other colors, though, just to make them look a little bit different. And the background color, you just come in and you do a number sign, and C-O, 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 and then I'll put a semicolon after that, and I can change the border like you might think, and let's say that I want to have that be a solid gray. You could also use a wiki color there if you'd like, and I'm going to throw in some padding. Also, that's going to make the buttons a little bit bigger, so let's say that I want to do like a padding of around five pixels, and that's pretty good. So let's just leave that there, and I can go and copy that because I'm going to use it again. Well, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to do it here. All right, so let's also do, let's do a paste inside of here. You're also going to be able to change if the button is pressed on. And I'm going to use like an A9, A9, A9. Okay, so A9, A9, A9. And just leave everything else be basically the same. All right, so that looks good. All right, so click on OK, and you can see all those colors went and changed. And let's now come in here, and I'm going to, uh, let's go in, and let's also mess around with the display a little bit. So once again, you're going to come in here at the bottom where it has Style Sheet. Click on that. Did it open up? Yeah, it did. All right, so there is our Style Sheet, and let's just paste that in. And instead of Push Button, let me zoom in more so I can make sure you can see this. And of course, I'm going to put all of this on my website. It's in the link, and of course, everything's free. So I'm going to go Q, and this is a line edit instead. Background color, let's have it just be, let's just put gray inside of there or something. And what else do I want to do? Uh, let's say border, let's one pixel solid gray. That's perfectly fine. And let's, uh, don't need to worry about padding in this situation. But if I want to color the text, I can just go in. Let's say I just want to make it all white. So it's going to be gray with a white background. All right. And of course, you can go in there and play around with that. See how you like it. So there we are. And let's also go in and let's put some text inside of here. So I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to go 0.0. .0. And there it is, and it's on the left side of the screen, which looks kind of dumb. So let's come in and let's change our font a little bit. So just going to scroll up here and click inside of here and see what type of font. Did that open up? No, it didn't. All right, open it up again. There we go. And let's say that we want to do something like Arial, and we want to do 18 maybe, and bold, and that looks all right. So it looks a little bit better, but I want it on the right side of the screen. And to have that set up, you just do alignment, and it's aligned to the left right now. Let's align it to the right. All right, so that looks good. Okay, so now what are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna have to come in here and change what these buttons look like. So I'm just gonna come in and double click on that. Let's make that be a seven, double click on this. You can change the text either the way that I just did it or change it however you would like. And let's have this be like division and let's have this be like a memory. So you can add that and four and five and six and multiplication and maybe you want to delete the memory that you stored and one and two and three and have that be plus and have this be to retrieve the memory and then this can be to clear it and have this be zero and just keep on going. This can be to change the sign and a subtraction will fill that out and then finally equals. All right, so we have everything looking pretty good there. Now what I wanna do is I wanna change the text for all of these different buttons to something that looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna come in here and select that guy right there and I'm gonna just change its name to button seven. And I'm gonna do that for all of the different buttons on here so that they all make sense. 
Okay, so now you can see that I have button 0, 1, 2, 3, the whole way through 9. And those are all tied into these different numbers that we have here. Of course, you can pause your screen if you want to go and type all that in. And now I'm going to select our clear button that we have up here. And I'm going to just change the name of that to clear. That works. And let's do this one, which is going to change our sign. And let's change that to change sign that works fine and then we have to do the division and let's just change that to divide and these are very important these names because you're going to be referencing these using your code whenever you set up your event handling there's multiply and this is going to be add and I'm hitting enter every time after I type in these and finally subtract well, not finally, because I still have to do the memory ones. So let's go and get this one. And I can do memory, mem add. That works fine. And got it selected. And let's change this to mem clear. And this can just be mem git. And then finally, this is going to be equals. All right. And there we got it. Uh, well, only other thing I want to do is maybe I want to change this, these buttons here to a different color from this stuff over here. I don't know, just to do something. So here's the wiki colors again. And what, let's say that I want to do something like a dark orange. So let's go and copy this and back over inside of here again. And let's so and select all these different guys that we have. So there we go. And then we'll go into our style sheet again. Here it is click on that and then we'll change the background color so there's that and of course it's all going to be the same whenever they are pressed on and there you can see now they're orange I don't know I just felt like doing something different okay so there is the layout for our whole entire calculator and we have all of this set up already so now what we need to do is jump over to our code by clicking on edit all right and here is our design mode and we can come into our header section and here we go Okay, so basically what we have here with this guy right here is we're saying that we want to use the standard UI namespace, which is going to be tied to our UI file, this file over here, calculator.ui, and what else we got here? We also are going to declare here with the Q object that we want to declare our class as a Q object, which is the base class for all of our QT objects or uh, Qt objects is actually how you pronounce it i i just can't get bring myself to saying cute but i guess saying cutie over and over again isn't weird it's kind of weird also this is also going to handle event handling for us which is going to be very useful for signals and slots we also are going down here to declare our constructor and by passing zero inside of there we're stating that this widget has no parent and we're also going to now define our slots so we're going to go private and slots and you're going to see exactly how these work basically these slots are going to be uh, executed whenever a signal is going to be submitted so what that means is if any of my number buttons are ever pressed a function that i'm going to create here in a moment called num pressed is going to be called and executed so i'm also going to handle all of my math buttons all with the same slot and I'm going to do the same with our equal button and also the change the number sign button change number sign okay so there's a whole bunch of different ways we're going to handle those and now I'm going to go over and start creating them just want to go in here to main.cpp. You can see exactly where that is. We are not going to have to change absolutely anything. We're just creating our application here and showing it on the screen. Everything we're going to be changing is going to be occurring in calculator.cpp. So let's open that guy up. All right, so what are we going to need inside of our calculator? Well, I would like to be able to track our current value for our calculation. So I'm going to create a double inside here. I'm going to call this calc value and it's going to start off with a value of 0.0, .0. i'd also like to define what was the last uh, math button that was clicked on so i'm going to create a whole bunch of booleans here 
So let's go trigger and false. And I'm going to have to constantly keep track of which of the math buttons has been clicked on. And you'll see here in a moment why exactly that's going to work that way. So I'm also going to be able to track multiplication and the addition button and the subtraction button. This is going to be really, really simple the way this works. Here is our constructor. We've used that a million times before. Here is our QMain window constructor. Or you know, we've talked about it in the previous tutorial, but you know, that's all that you never really need to worry about that. Uh, this guy right here is going to create the UI class and assign it to our UI member that we have. And this guy right here is going to set up our UI for us. And then this is the deconstructor that we have right there. And what else are we going to do? Well, I would like to go in and I'm going to be doing a lot of the work right here inside of this to initialize everything right whenever we create it. So let's say that I want to come in here and you can see that we're able to reference the UI just by going UI. Very first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that 0.0, .0 is showing up in our display. Well, to do that, I just go UI. And then I put in the dis whatever the name is for the widget we're working with. So you can see that those automatically pop up there for us. And then if I want to actually change the text inside of it, I just go set text. And then inside of here, I put exactly the text that I want to show up inside of it. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this calc value that we have right here and put that inside of there. The only problem is this expects a what's called a Q string and this is a double. So how are we going to convert it? Very easily. We just go Q string and then we go number and then we go calc value. There's a lot in this one tutorial. This is all I'm almost structuring this as a learn QT in one uh, video the way that I have this set up. I'm also going to hold a create an array that's going to hold a reference to all my Q push buttons. So to do that, just go Q push button and I'm going to call it num buttons. And how many do I need? Well, it's zero through nine, so I need 10 of them. So we got that created. Now what I want to do is cycle through each of those and then I want to assign our signal as well as our slot. So I'm going to create a for loop and I'll go int i is equal to zero and i is less than 10. So that's going to cover zero through nine. And then I'll go plus plus i and I'm going to create a q string and I'll call this butt name is equal to and button. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because that's what I named our buttons. As you see right here, button zero the whole way through nine. Okay, simple stuff. Okay, and you can't just put the number inside of there though. You have to go and convert this to a Q string. And I just showed you how to do that. And we'll throw I inside of there. And what else am I gonna do? Well, I want to get the buttons by name and then add them to our array. So I'm gonna go, because this contains Q push buttons, it doesn't have just names of buttons inside of it. So I'm gonna go num and buttons and throw i inside of there is equal to and calc. And if you want to find our calculator, calc later there we are and if you want to find a child widget inside of there you go find child and i'm specifically looking i'm going to cast this to a push button and i can put our button name inside of it so that's how you do a search for a specific widget which is by providing the name Okay, so another thing we learned, which is good stuff. Now what I wanna do is whenever our button is released, I want to call the function numPressed, which we defined previously in our header. So I'm gonna go connect and numButtons i, and I have to define signal, and this is going to be whenever one of those buttons is released and then I am going to pass this inside of there and then the slot or the function that's going to be called when one of those buttons is released is called numpressed as I defined it whenever I uh, in the previous part of the tutorial or you know here I'll just show you 
calculator H, see, num pressed, it's right there. All right, good stuff. So let's back inside of here. I'm gonna have to also go inside of here though and put those parentheses. Okay, so good stuff. Now all of those are going to be all set up so that whenever our, that's all it is, that's it, we're done with that. So that's going to call numpressed anytime one of our buttons, number buttons is clicked on. Now down inside of here, after we have our destructor, I'm gonna show you how numpressed is set up. So we're gonna go void, just like we did in the header, calculator and um, I'm gonna go num pressed, which is the name of it, and we'll go and have that work. So we will, first thing I need to do is go Q push button and button, and the sender is gonna return a pointer to the button that was actually pressed. Whoops, go star button, whoops, there we are, is equal to, and we'll be able to do all kinds of things with this. So Q push button, and sender and after we have that all set up i need to get the number that was on the button that was clicked on so i'm going to go and store that in butt value and how you get it is you go button and text and there it is so that's how we get the number off of our q button then i want to get the value in our display so i'm going to go q string and let's just call this display value and to get it go UI and the name which is display and text and now we grab that also and I'm going to here go and check if the value is currently equal to zero on this or not so I'm gonna say if display value and I'm gonna go to double on that value is equal to zero, or I'm gonna just go and copy this, you know, because I'm a little lazy. All right, so let's copy this, and let's paste that inside of there, and I'll say 0, 0.0, and now what I wanna do is go UI display, oop, there it is, and set our text to whatever the button value is for the button that was clicked on. All right, so we got that all set up. Else, what I'm gonna do is go and get Q string new value is equal to display value. That means there's already a value inside of there that I wanna add to it. And I can go and combine those into a new Q string and double, and let's just call this double new value is equal to new value to, oops, double, and convert that to a double. And then what else do I wanna do? Basically, I need to set the value in the display, and I'm also gonna do set it up so that it will be able to handle a maximum of 16 digits before it uses exponents, and you might wanna change that in your own code. It's up to you completely. And to do that, you go UI and display again, and we're gonna use set, whoops, text and Q string and number, and we're gonna pass our double new val inside of there, and then you put G inside of here. And then I said I want it to be 16 before it starts turning the values into exponents, and that's all that's set up. And I think that's good. I think that's everything I need to do. Let's go and save it and test it. So let's go and hit this little guy down here, the little play button, that guy right there, to run it and save all and test it. Oh, use of undeclared identifier, but value. Did you mean but val? All right, so there's but, oh, okay. So let's just change this to but val with a capital V. Save it and let's run it again. And it should work this time because I think that was it. Got a weird error down here. It says symbols not found for architecture x86, blah, blah, blah. What I need to do is just comment out these private slots here and that error will go away. And let's open this bag up again and let's run it. And you will see that the calculator opens up and if I hit zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, we are getting all of our numbers inside of there. So that is awesome. And now we need to go and implement all these other ones. So the next one I'm gonna implement is the math button pressed. 
So I'm going to uncomment that guy. And you know what? I'm probably just going to write all this code at one time. So let's just uncomment all of it. So there we are. And calculator CPP again. And let's go and get this. I'm just going to copy this to make sure that I don't uh, type in the wrong name. And there we are. And just come down here. And we'll come out and paste that inside of there. And change this to calculator. And got that all set up. All right. Whoops. And put this here. Okay. So now what are we going to need to do? I want to be able to track which math button was clicked on last. We've already covered that. So what I want to do here is whenever a new one is clicked on, I want to set all of them to false again because we know that we have a new one that's pressed and we want to go verify what that is. So malt and add and sub. Okay. And I want to store the current value inside of display because we are ready to perform some calculation. So display value is equal to UI and just go display and text to be able to get the text out of our display. And then I'm gonna go and store this. So calc value is gonna be equal to display value. And I'm gonna convert that into a double because that's what we are storing everything as. And then I'm gonna check my sender to find out what math button was actually clicked on. So let's just call that button again, just to keep this consistent and do a cast to a push button. And then we will go sender. We can get the sender that sent us to this function. And then what I want to do is get the math symbol on the button. So just go Q string button value is equal to whatever the button text is and See, it's pretty straightforward. Then what I want to do is I'm going to see which of these buttons was actually clicked on. So I'll go if Q string and we can do a comparison. That's something else I don't think I brought up at the beginning. I'm showing you how to compare Q strings inside of this tutorial. All kinds of stuff packed in this guy. And then I want this to be case insensitive and always better to be safe than sorry. And if it is equal to zero, then that means that I have a match. So I'm gonna go div trigger is equal to true. And then later on, we'll actually perform the actual calculation. So I'm just gonna copy this because we're going to change very few things. So paste that inside of there. And then this time I will do a comparison with multiplication and then I will change this to malt trigger and else and then I will compare it to addition and then we will just have an else whoops because we checked everything else so we will say else then I can just do this and get rid of all of that. So get rid of this and okay. And then we will change this to, whoops, I forgot to change this one, add. And then we will finally change this to subtract. All right, good stuff. Then we can clear our display because we know that we are about to enter a new number. So I'm gonna say set text and I'm going to put nothing inside of it. Whoops, there we go, and there we go. All right, and that's gonna handle if a math button was pressed, so that's good. Let's jump back over here again, and now let's handle if our equals button was clicked on, and I just paste that there, and change this to calculator, All right. Now, if an equals button is pressed, what I wanna do is I want to hold our calculation. Whoops, what am I doing here? I'm gonna hold my calculation and let's just call it solution in 0, 0.0. And then we can go and get the value that is in the display to perform said calculation. So display value is equal to UI and call display and then call text 
and there we go. All right, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna convert that into a double. So let's just call this double display value is equal to display value, convert it to a double so we can perform our calculations. Then what I wanna do is make sure a math button was indeed pressed. So I'll go add trigger or, and then sub trigger or malt trigger or division trigger. All right, so one of those was clicked on. Then inside of here, I'm gonna say, if the last one that was clicked on was called add trigger, well then I know that solution is going to be equal to calc value plus double display value. And we can just go and copy this to save a little time and say else and then paste that in there and then this will be sub so whoops sub and change this to subtraction and then we'll say else if and then let's go and do a comparison for malt trigger and if that worked multiplication and otherwise we are going to just go else and we will know that this was a division. So solution is equal to calc value divided by double display value. Awesome. And then after we have all of that stuff set up there, we can go and go UI and display and set text and then convert it into a Q string number and solution and what else do we got there there we are and then we have to do the last one so what's that one called it's called change number sign and if you haven't caught on yet I'm letting you do the memory ones I know you can do it for homework as well as the clear so for homework you get to do that and I'm not doing that because I'm lazy or I don't feel like doing it. I'm doing it because I've covered enough here for you to be able to do it on your own. And if you want to learn how to do this stuff, you got to practice. So there we go. Whoops. And if you find a solution to either one of those, please uh, take a little time, share your solution with other people because it's always nice to share. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and get the value that is currently in our display to change the value from subtraction to, uh, or a negative sign or a positive sign for our text. Okay, so we got that. And now I'm gonna show you how to do a regular expression check to verify that th what is inside of there is actually a number. So we go Q, regular expression, and I'm gonna call this reg, cause that's nice and simple. And I'm gonna say that we might have a negative, well, we're not gonna have a positive sign. I don't know, let's just throw that inside of there. Or, you know what, I'm gonna get rid of that. All right, so we got that. However, we don't know if we're gonna have a negative sign inside of there. And then we're also going to have zero through nine or a decimal inside of it and one or more of those guys, and that is going to create our regular expression. Now what we're gonna be able to do is say if reg and exact match, and do this on display value. Okay, so if we have a match, then I'm gonna say that we can change the value on it. So double display value is equal to display val two double and then again uh, double display you know what let's do that and then let's just change this to sign is equal to and if we want to negate whatever it is we multiply it times one and double display value there we go and then we want to put our solution in the display so we'll go ui and display and set text and Q string number and double display value sign. And I think, is that everything? 
Why do I feel like there's, yeah, I felt like there was too many parentheses, and indeed there was too many parentheses. Let's get that there. And that's our whole calculator, guys, I think, as long as I did it right. So let's run it. And here is our calculator. And we can do something like 2 plus 3... Oh, or 23, I guess. Whoops. Uh, you know what? Let's run it again. Well, let's just do 23. And then we'll do plus 3. Whoops, I made some type of an error here. Let's go and figure out what I did. Oh, I know. I'm a meathead sometimes. I forgot to tie our... Um, our different signals with our slots okay so we're going to do that up here so i can just copy a lot of this so let's just copy it and make sure that we do it in the right area yes this works okay so let's just go outside of this for loop and we'll connect so we will get rid of this and i'll go ui and add so there's the add one and again we're going to do this for if it is released in math button pressed is the thing math button pressed all right and then we'll copy this and then we'll do this for the other ones so we also have subtract and everything else is the same and then multiply whoops multiply whoops multi apply and then we will do divide and then i'm gonna have to also do one for our equal sign so let's paste that inside of there and this one is going to be equals and then we are going to equal button pressed so we'll just do this equal button pressed and then we will have our sign one so again and you can see i'm just referencing whoops change sign i'm just referencing the thing i'll show you here in a second what i'm referencing just to make a hundred percent certain you know exactly what i'm doing and then this is going to be change number sign which is the name of the function and these of course you know are these see what we define these slots down here are these functions and then the names come from here so see change sign and all the other different things all right let's run it make sure it's all saved Oop, da, 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 da. equal button pressed so what did i do wrong there let's go and verify that so back into this and back into calculator sometimes i make mistakes because i make mistakes all right so equal button pressed what did i call it equal button da, 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 da. equal button what i didn't want that to be that way equal button oh wait a minute what did i call it up here uh equal button now oh, let's change it to pressed okay equal button pressed in the header file that's where i am see calculator header and equal button pressed doesn't that make more sense to have it be that i think so and let's run it again and hopefully i got everything sorted out there and it looks like it did there are no errors and let's do it again so we will go uh three minus two is equal to one good stuff and then we can say plus three is equal to four which is also good times two is equal to eight divided by four is equal to two and then we can also change yep that works also times two is equal to negative four all right so it looks like everything is wonderful and working like a charm so pretty cool stuff hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial i enjoyed making it and like always please leave your questions and comments below otherwise till next time